With the new Psychic Awakening and the War of the Spider, we get to see some new awesome storylines from Fabius, and we get to see what he's been up to and what tricks he's been planning. If you like the content we're pushing out of Twisted Dice, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. It really does help us out massively, and it helps us out towards that awesome goal of 10,000 subs. Now, we're also going to be offering one lucky subscriber a chance of winning a fully painted Fabius Bile, painted by myself, Darren, and he is looking absolutely stunning. Anyway, more on that competition is going to be coming up very, very soon, so please keep an eye out. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you've hit that bell, because that's going to keep you updated on when that competition comes out. At the beginning of this story, we see Fabius is, is on the run after stealing a very, very important artifact from Nurgle, more importantly from Rotticus himself. This artifact, the Ark of Contagious, is a very unusual artifact. The artifact itself has some really cool properties in the fact that whoever causes any battle damage, the artifact can heal that battle damage faster than the foes who can inflict it, but it does come at a price. Whoever wears the artifact will soon start to start turning into like a, a monstrous bloat or even um, start showing signs of flesh disease. So it's not really a great artifact actually to be wielding unless you want to look particularly like a death guard. God only knows what Fabius is planning with that horrible, ridiculous artifact. He must know that he can't wield that himself without turning into a blubbering mess. But mind you, for, um, Fabius is a clone lord and he has that ability that if he did use the artifact and did turn into a blubbering mess, he will just instantly just download himself into another clone. So I suppose to him it doesn't really, really matter. But only Fabius knows on what plans he's got with that horrible artifact. In the book it kind of talks to or kind of hints to Fabius planning some tricky new little schemes. Uh, and one of these, these schemes, which I found was really in interesting, uh, attempting or attempt to clone in or creating his own Primarch or fashioning of some new dread new altered army, developed of a weapon that could lay low to Rebute Gilliman or indeed any other seemingly godlike beings. So that kind of makes me think could they be talking about potentially? Fabius knowing that he could be having to face his his gene father again. Could we be seeing that later on we'll see another book come out with Fulgrim reappearing and possibly Fabius having to confront him again. Now in the past Fabius Bile has turned down Fulgrim's gifts. He's turned down the ability to turn himself into demon of any kind or take any of the enhancements. One of the things I love about about Bat Fabius he doesn't portray any of the traits of demonhood, so he hasn't followed any of the chaos gods. Uh, he hasn't taken on any of the demon traits, so he hasn't even taken in any of the abilities that some of his brothers may have already taken advantage of, like turning into a demon prince, uh, having demonic gifts. The only demon gifts that he has got is ones that he's acquired, and this is quite interesting. Now we know. Fabius Bile has the Rod of Torment, which is kind of a demon weapon. He has the Chiragian, which is the backpack that sits upon Fabius's back. Now that device, Fabius made that himself, but the, the, the interesting part about that is the fact that he gets his own sentience and actually comes to life. And as we, as we will do another thing about the whole thing about that, because there's some really cool, interesting stuff all around the Chirurgeon itself. But of course, he's also got his Needler as well, which comes in very, very important later on in the actual fluff. Typhus is on Fabius's heels, desperate to get the artifact back and to gain favor with Nurgle. And he's catching up with Fabius very, very quickly. Now, just out of sheer chance, Fabius Bile's path crosses with the Enlightener. The Enlightener was once a chapter master for the Brazen Drakes. This used to be a loyal chapter to the Imperium. Now, Corian started to manifest psychic abilities, which he hid away for the, from the Imperium, which he probably manifested them within the actual warp itself, within the warp rift. And of course, anything that happens within the warp rift, 
the sows the seeds of chaos start sown within his soul and of course his his chapter splits and divides and they go to war against each other since the fall of the brazen drakes corian had had gone to the war zone of cadia and claimed a tainted fortress world of desire i hope i've got that right he renamed his war band shriven and fight under the colors of the black legion now corin has a price upon his head because of the fall from grace the imperium hasn't forgotten more importantly nor is the custodes now corin has a that price upon his head it's meant that the word has got back to the custodes of where his whereabouts are and agents of the imperium are en route to take him out now fabius sees this army and he knows that he can use it against his his pursuers so he knows he can he can enhance these troops to take upon typhus now he kind of makes a pack or makes a deal with corin that he will enhance his troops and himself to help a take on the imperium but more importantly help fabius out take upon his threat that's coming from typhus Fabius and Corin cements their alliance. Fabius Bile co-opted a sprawling suit of bio-warded vaults within which to continue his great works. He conceals his, his art of contagious behind runic locks and servant guns. Now Fabius Bile, he sets his, his acolytes to work, acquiring information upon the Scriven warriors and the Enlightener itself. And he, he sees that he's lost none of his, he's not lost any of his strategic cunning from when he was a loyal chapter master. Bile also sees evidence of prejudice within his actual army itself and he sees that you know the potential of hordes of cultists, mutants and also rogue psychers within the actual army itself. Now with Typhus being so close to coming out of real space the spider convinces Koran to to pretty much start focusing upon the threat that's at hand and Corin now realizing that the size and scale of Typhus's army, um, he decides that he's going to help his new ally. True to Fabius's word, he injects the elixir of bile into Corin, which makes him a lot, lot stronger. But it also plundered the hooks of an addiction and dependency into his soul. Whether the Enlightener wanted to be or not, he was now Fabius's creature and under Fabius's control. Fabius and his new enhanced warriors head off to cut Typhus off before Typhus gets hold of him. Now, Typhus, as he comes out of the warp into the real space, he finds a, a crippled vessel with weak life signs upon it. Now, Typhus opts not to board this ship, but instead to blow the ship out of the sky and crash it into the planet. Now, the relic is very important to Typhus and he wants to retrieve it, but what he knows that the relic is made by Nurgle and blessed by Papa Nurgle himself, he knows that he can afford to let that ship crash and just go in and pick up the relic afterwards because he knows that the people inside are not gonna survive. Once opening fire onto the ship, Typhus then deploys a big force down to the planet side to retrieve the artifact. As Typhus enters into the actual wreckage itself, Typhus, realizes he's been duped and he finds that there's loads of half-dead clones in the actual ship and Typhus also uncovers a massive great bomb within the actual ship itself which detonates but just before detonation Typhus starts getting radio chatter or starts getting communication from the other ships that they're being open fired upon now of course Typhus is quite resilient and he comes out of this you know damaged but not not too badly damaged now Fabius being Fabius, he sets up the perfect, perfect ambush. A couple of days before, he sets off a couple of drop pods or a couple of dread claws down to the planet to make the perfect ambush upon Typhus and his men. So as Typhus and the remaining troops of the Death Guard are, are basically hunkered in, the Black Legion are doing what they best they do best. They're coming in at close range and just hammering them with bolt of fire. But the Death Guard, they're not like, you know, your normal Chaos Space Marines. They don't pretty much get up and run. That that determination and resilience, or probably just the fact they're just mindless, they hunker themselves in and actually start fighting off Fabius and the Black Legion. Or more importantly, they start fighting us off the, the actual Black Legion themselves. Now, Typhus, coming out of the wreckage, he kind of orders what fleets are left up above to start putting down lance fire and bombardments onto the actual planet side itself to try help 
defend the the position of where they're at at the moment but he also orders a deployment of a lot of the plague po pox walkers onto the planet and pox walkers are pretty much horrible zombies now fabius is now stuck in this horrible situation where they're pretty much cut off from all angles. So you've got Typhus coming in from one angle, and you've also got then got the Pox Walkers coming off in other different angles. Fabius knowing that he's now caught in that horrible trap himself, with loads and loads of Pox Walkers coming in at all angles and Typhus as well, he they start making their retreat, and the Black Legion and, and Fabius start smashing their way through hordes of, of Pox Walkers. Now, unfortunately for the unfortunate black legion that get bobbed down with the actual pox walkers now bear in mind they are already advanced and enhanced by fabius but these pox walkers are so brutal you know they're getting on wherever they pull down they're they're ripping apart their armor and and gouging their fingers and pulling out limbs and pushing their fingers into eye sockets and mouths so you can imagine that being really really gruesome now fabius and the remaining black legion get off planet full and they make it back to uh, Corrin's uh, tainted fortress. Now, when they get back, Corrin kind of makes it sound like it wasn't as bad as it actually was, kind of like hypes it up, and it kind of then encourages the rest of the the, the war band to start being um, enhanced by Fabius Bile. So Fabius Bile, for the next couple of nights and days, he's working hard in trying to you know really improve the actual troops and make them a lot stronger and a lot more powerful but doing this Corin then realizes he's made a big big mistake because then their, their alliance starts breaking in a way because Corin realizes that by doing this it means that fabius has then got his his meaty hooks deep within the actual war band itself and they become more under fabius's control Corin starts getting demonic whispers information that the Imperium Retribution forces that were on his way to him are now only a handful short and only a warped jump away. Corrin is made aware that they are now in orbit over Barristan Prime. Corrin announces that he's no longer going to sit and wait and cower for the enemy to come to him, but he's now going to take the fight to them. So to keep this nice and short, when they started making Planet Fall, um, Corin starts ordering his, his troops to go in all different directions, but pretty much Fabius takes control and says, look, we're going to head down towards these, these refineries. So Fabius then heads, heads down and Corin kind of follows him down with him. Um, they start fighting off the custodians and they start backing them up. Now custodians are quite powerful and they've got the Sisters of Silence there and they're, you know, they're really battling, battling it out. But Fabius sees an opportunity where he knows that th these, these refineries are being guarded by uh, minimal forces because the custodes the custodes shield captain has ordered a couple of these custodes to sit back and and pretty much guard these refineries so fabius has seen his opportunity and he sneaks off with a with a handful of a handful of guys with his little his surgery equipment and he disappears off in, into the shadows into the gloomy ad alleyways now, Corin is going off, he's going into battle, he's been enhanced by Fabius and he's unrecognizable to most of his comrades, but you know, he's a deadly foe now and he's, he's battering the hell out of, out of his enemies. Now, Fabius and his b bunch of merry men, they come into the refinery and they find that, you know, uh, a custodes, you know, I think it's just one custodes and some Sisters of Silence. Now, of course, Fabius is, is using his needle and this is what I was saying about earlier on with this, this needle playing a massacre part in it. Fabius starts shooting the needler at the, the joints and the weak points of the, the custodes and the Sisters of Silence. And he's not trying to kill these, by the way. He's trying to capture the, the custodes for his own personal gain. And if you know anything about Fabius, he wants to improve upon his clone. He wants to make them better. So Fabius has kind of got his eyes and mind set upon capturing a custodes. And he does. He manages to you know to take the custodes down and the sisters of silence and his his minions cut off these mod, you know these bodies back to his ship once fabius had done his harvesting the spider returned back leading his warriors back to the battle to support corin he arrived just in time to see his forces starting to deplete and on the brink of collapse however the lightning himself was, in, was blazing out with witch fire through his eyes and his hands outstretched wide as he drove the shield captain down onto his knees. And it was at that point a crack echo was heard 
as a bullet passed through the through the air with a puff of blood he that hit the side of Corin's head Corin hit the ground his fires blinked out and in a heart in a heartbeat his body crashed heavily to the ground at that moment the battle had ended in the route that followed only the mortal and the might of the shriven allowed them to execute a firing retreat to the drop craft amongst the mayhem and bloodshed fabius bile bore the twitching body of corian from the field as he led them gunning down the few loyalists who got in his path while smiling the whole way once back at the tainted fortress fulgrim and the quiration starts getting to work in doing some major works to corin once he's back at the fortress he then presents himself to the rest of the shriven and out of the out of the depths or out of the shadows corin appears but he's not no longer the way he was before because he's obviously taken that that bullet to the brain fabius has been working deep you know taking chunks out of his brain he's got wires he's got all sorts going into him and he's no longer the same person as he was before. And at this point, the ones still loyal to Corin start raising their blades, so start unsheathing their weaponry to, to attack Fabius. However, at that point, Corin's eyes light up with witchfire and annihilate or annihilate anyone that's still loyal to him. Fabius then gives the rest of them the opportunity then to start fielding loyalty to himself. And at that point, the rest of them do agree and that point is where Fabius then starts finishing off his work and starts bolstering defences, ready for the attack that's coming from the Custodes and, of course, from Typhus himself. Typhus realised he made a massive great mistake taking on Fabius in the way he did, and he'd lost quite a big chunk of his force. Still eager to get that artefact back from Fabius, between the worlds he travelled to get to where Fabius was currently subsiding, he stopped off and managed to build the biggest poxwalker army imaginable between now and then. So ready for when he does hit planet four in the Tainted Fortress, they would have a massive great army to take on Fabius. Tyva, the shield captain for the Custodius Guard, was aware of Fabius and what he had done in their last encounter in taking away one of his Custodius Guards and of course the, the Sisters of Silence. Being fearful of what Fabius may be up to, or the experience he may be doing upon his custodies, he was in quick hot pursuit to reclaim his fallen brethren. So in this last part, we see the custodies have made planet fall, as well as the actual Death Guard themselves, and a big battle emerges upon the actual planet. Now, Fabius has still been working away, and he feels that he may have left it a bit too late before start making his um, escape off the planet. So he's still working upon the artifacts and, of course, the, the new delights of the custodians that he has captured. So what we see in this last part is, with the battle commences, you see Typhus and the shield captain finally meet up. Typhus realised that this is a foe that he cannot, he cannot best, and he conjures up a massive great cloud of flies and makes his great escape. Now, you may wonder what the fate was of Corin himself. The assassins who reappeared to take down Corin for the last and final time. And it, it led to the belief that possibly it was one of the, maybe a Vindicator assassin that assassinated him on the previous encounter. This last part, Fabius makes his great escape. Using the cover of battle between Typhus and the Custodes and the, the last of the Shriven, fighting their last defences upon the Tainted Fortress, Fabius managed to sneak off in his vessel with, of course, his new acquired artefact and his new golden boy to test back at his laboratory in the Eye of Terror. It'd be really interesting to see what everyone else thinks on this in what Fabius may be planning with those horrible artefacts of Roticus. More importantly, what he may be planning with the Sisters of Silence and the Custodes, because that's a, a lovely little prize that Fabius has probably been after for a very, very long time. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll catch you all again soon on another fluff report, battle report, or even a painting guide. Thanks for watching.